and hello everyone welcome back to another t Kinder tutorial so in this tutorial we're going to be working with checkboxes because in the previous tutorial we talked about radio buttons if you didn't see that video i do recommend you do because i won't be going over everything like i did in a previous video because i kind of assume you have some of the knowledge i gave you but just as a refresher I'm going to just show you the difference between a checkbox and a radio button. You can skip this part if you already know. But anyways, so this is radio buttons or these are radio buttons. Now, these buttons are special in a sense that if you select this button right here, then that's the only one that's selected. But as soon as you select this button here, this is no longer selected. So only one of these can be selected. As you do this. So only one of these can be selected because if we try and then select this one, then this one will no longer be selected. If you try and select this one again, then this one won't be selected. So only one of these can be selected. And usually you know which one is selected by having like a little circle here in the middle that basically shows you that it's selected. Again, if you didn't see my previous video on these, I do recommend you do. Now a checkbox is different. So this is a checkbox. Usually they're represented by a square, but you may also know them as like one of these slider things that you can slide on or off where this would be like on and that's where it's currently at. If you click it, then this moves that way and then it's off. If you know what I'm talking about, otherwise you don't have to worry about this. But then it can also be seen as a checkbox because you don't need multiple checkboxes to make something cool. You only need one. But usually you do have multiple checkboxes. And this is like a multi uh, multi answer type of thing in a sense where you can select any amount you need. For example, this would maybe be used to get the user age. So age. Ooh, age because you can only be one age or between one age range whilst this would be used to maybe get the user skills so you can have like multiple skills listed out and the user can check off whether they have that skill or not the difference is you can check multiple boxes here, where the, here you can only check one radio button. So multiple boxes can be checked here, only one can be checked here. That's the difference. Re radio buttons can only give you one option you can check, while a checkbox can either be used on its own as like an on and off switch, because if it's checked, then it will return true. If it's not checked, it will return false. Or it can be used in a group like this, where you give, give basically like a bunch of choices and the user can check all that apply. Okay, so that is the basic difference between them. If you maybe forgot the video we talked about yesterday, or yesterday, I mean last week. So yeah, now if we were to currently run this, we'd get this. Now, one thing I do want to show you is how to resize this on launch because sometimes you don't want the window size to be this small. Let's say you want it about to be this big or something like that. We can actually set that. So here we can say root dot geometry, and this will basically give the geometry of the window. And in a string, we can say how big it should be. So let's maybe go 400 by 400. Whoa. If we do that, then we will get a 400 by 400 box. As you can see, it's much bigger. Of course, this is the width and this is the height so if we were to make the width let's say 200 or let's make the width longer let's make it 600 and let's make the height 200 that will give us like a vertical or horizontal like window as you can see here now it's longer but shorter here so that's how you can change the size of a window i'm going to keep it like this because why not we can now know that it's there now first, let's create our checkbox. So I'm just going to say CBX for checkbox is equal to a check button because that's what they're called in TKinter, not a checkbox. And I'm going to split it up into a couple of lines here because it's pretty long. It's going to be attached to root. It's going to have the text next to it, which is going to say, are you older than 
let's go 60. So this will be, are you an elderly person? Or you can maybe older than 18 or 21 if you want to, the person to check if they are allowed to go into the bar or something like that. Now we want to basically give it value. So when you check it, what value should be returned? And we just say on value, ooh, value. And this basically means when it's checked, what should it return? And here we can return whatever you want. I'm going to return maybe an integer, not a string. Let's go here and let's say if it's one, then it's on. Otherwise, the off value, you could probably make like a Boolean come out of this if you want to. Value is equal to zero. But yeah, that's optional. But of course you can make this a string as well and just say on or off. Now, how do we store these values? Well, in the previous video, we already covered this. We can just say, I'm just gonna say checked here, is equal to an int var. This int var is basically what's going to allow us to hold the number or the value inside of here. You can go string var if you wanted to instead. But yes, yeah, so and now this will be stored inside of this once we tell it to. So right here, I'm going to say variable to say you should store inside of this variable is equal to checked. There we go. Now, if you check this, it's going to be stored inside of here. And now if you say cbx.pack, then it will now be on the window. So let's go here and there. Are you older than 60? And there it's checked, now it's unchecked. Checked, unchecked. Currently it doesn't do anything. You might want to add a button to make it do something. Or you can maybe add that function onto this button right here. So let's actually create a little function here. Let's say define display elderly to display if they're elderly. And this will take in the variable. Then you can say LBL and then we're creating our own little label here. And we're going to delete it like in a previous video. We're just going to let it pack it onto the screen. And I'm going to say, or let's just go label. We don't need to put it inside of a variable since we're not going to really work with it too much. I'm going to attach it to root. And I'm going to say the text is equal to, so with this text here, we're just going to put X there. And we're going to pack it to the screen. And there we go. So now this text is going to be put on the screen, whatever is going to be passed in here. Now let's go here and actually add the text. So I'm going to say command is equal to, and this is going to be a Lambda command. If you don't know what a Lambda command is, I do highly recommend you go watch my Python tutorial on it. But in a sense, it's basically like a one line or function. Anyways, Lambda, and here we're going to say display elderly. And inside of here, we're going to pass in what we want to say. So in this case, let's maybe instead of passing the text, let's just pass in this checked variable here. Let's do that. Whoops. So we're passing that checked variable here. And what we can do here is we can say if x is equal to one, then we can do this. And then here we can say else, because otherwise x is not one, which means that they're younger than 60. And we can do the same label packing thing, but just like that. And now here, instead of saying x, we can say, you are older, or you are elderly. There we go. But that's only if this is checked. Otherwise, we can say you are not elderly. Cool. Now let's run this and see if it works. Checked. You are not elderly. Ooh, not elderly. Not elderly. That is not the way it should be. And you know why? Because we should say dot get. I forgot to add that dot get. That dot get is very important because in tkinter it basically gets what's inside of one of these. Now if we do that, you are elderly, you are not. 
you are elderly, you are not. So yeah, that is the basics of how a checkbox work. Thank you for watching. I hope you all enjoyed and can now use both checkboxes and radio buttons. And I'll see you all again in the next TKinter tutorial.